Welcome to Electron Online. Here in our third example, we see that we have a current source instead of a voltage source. But again, we have a switch. In this case, it opens at time equals zero. So what we need to do first to find the initial current through the inductor, we need to draw the circuit up the way it looked before the switch opens. That means when T is less than zero. So when the switch is closed, the circuit will have this particular equivalence to it. So let's draw it. There's yeah. the current source, 15 amps. We still have the 24 ohm resistor. This. Now notice over here, if we're in a steady state situation, we have a steady current flowing to the circuit. That means the inductor will act like an open circuit. If this is an open circuit, that means this point has the same voltage as this point, which means no current will flow across the 5 ohm resistor. And so the equivalent circuit of this portion, with the switch closed, will be simply these two resistors in parallel. We'll have a 12 ohm resistor and we'll have an 8 ohm resistor. And these two components act like they're not there. So this acts like it's an open and this acts like it's a short. So we have a 24 ohm resistor over here. Here we have a 12 ohm resistor, and here we have an 8 ohm resistor. Next, what we need to do is we need to find the initial current through the inductor, which means we need to find this current right here. But in order to do that, let's find the current through each of the three branches. Let's call this I sub 1, let's call this I sub 2, and let's call this I sub 3, and that will be the current through each of those three branches before the switch is opened. How do we do that? We have three resistors in parallel connected to a single 15 amp current source. Well, to find the current through the first resistor, I through the first resistor, that's equal to the total current of the circuit, which is the 15 amps, times the ratio of the product of the other two resistors, so that would be 12 times 8, divided by the three products of the combination of the three resistors. So in other words, this resistor times this resistor, so it'll be 24 multiplied times 12, and may need a little bit more room, plus these two resistors, that would be 12 times 8, plus those two resistors. Uh, let's see here. No, I have those two. Oh, I have those two. I don't have those two yet. All right, so that would be 24 times 8. There we go. So, oh, I need a bigger parenthesis. That means to find the current through this branch, we multiply the resistors of the other two branches divided by the sum of the product of these two, these two, and these two resistors. That'll give us the current. Now we need a calculator for that. Plus 12 times 8 plus So in the denominator we get 24, 24 times, 24 times 8 equals, that's 576, and so let me write that out. This is equal to 15 amps times the ratio. In the numerator, we'll get uh, 96. In the denominator, we get 576. And times 96 amps. and times 15, which means the current through the first branch, of course, the one with the larger resistor will have the smallest amount of current, two and a half amps. We do the same for the other two. Therefore, I sub two is equal to the 15 amps times the product of the resistors of the other two branches, which is 24 times eight, divided by the same denominator, which we now know is 576. And Times so we 15, get 24 and we get 5 times amps. 8 divided by 576. And now for the third current, I sub 3, that would of course be 15 minus the other two, but just so you can see that it works in all cases, we have 15 amps times the ratio of the product of the resistance of the other two branches, 24 times 12 divided by 576. And notice that's one and a half times the size of this, which means it's 7.5 amps. And sure enough, when you add the three together, two and a half plus five plus seven and a half adds up to 15 amps. So we know that's correct. All right, now that we have the three currents, we realize that this here represents the initial current 
through the inductor, so the 5 amps is equal to the initial current through the inductor. Now we still need to find the time constant. To do that, we're going to draw the circuit after the switch is closed, find the equivalent circuit, and find the time constant. So at t greater than 0, we open the switch. That means that the 15 amp current is now isolated from this part of the circuit. It simply drives current through the 24 ohm resistor and then back to the current source. This is on its own, so let's draw that circuit right there. So we end up with a 12 ohm resistor, an 8 ohm resistor, a 5 ohm resistor. Here we have an inductor, like that. So we have 12 ohms. Here we have 8 ohms and 5 ohms, and that's a 2 Henry inductor. Now we need to find the equivalent circuit. Notice relative to the inductor, from this point to get to this point, we have two paths. This path, which combined will give us a 20 ohm resistance, this path gives us a 5 ohm resistance. So the equivalent circuit will look as follows. We have an inductor. We have a single 5 ohm resistor and we have a combined 8 plus 12 or a 20 ohm resistor here. So that's 5 ohms, this is 20 ohms, and this here is a 2 Henry inductor. And then, of course, since they're in parallel, we take the product over the sum. That's 100 divided by 25 or 4. So then finally we can say that the most simplified equivalent circuit for that would be this, 2 Henrys, and 4 ohms. And that is the equivalent resistance. Once we find the equivalent resistance, we can find the time constant. We know the time constant being L over R is equal to 2 Henry's divided by 4 ohms, which is equal to a half second. From that, we're able to find the current through the inductor. We know that the current through the inductor, I, as a function of time is equal to the initial current times e to the minus t over tau. And in this case, the initial current we found to be 5 amps. And then e to the minus t over tau, which is 0 0.5 seconds. And if we want to write that in a slightly simplified format, that's equal to 5 amps times e to the minus 2t. There is the current through the inductor after the switch opens for time greater than zero. Again, find the equivalent circuit in order to find the initial current. Then over here, when time is greater than zero, find the equivalent circuit so that you can solve for the time constant. Plug those two values in here and you end up with the final current through the inductor. And that's how it's done.